not, I mean, you can eat healthy all day, right? But if you're not moving and you're not providing that stimulus that your body and your bones need, your bones aren't going to become stronger and it's going to be really hard to maintain them also. Same thing with your muscles. There's a really tight connection between muscle and bone too. And in order to, to build stronger bones, you have to have two different types of stimuli. You need muscle pulling on bone. So you need this, this mechanical signal that sends a chemical signal to tell those bones to become stronger. And then you need impact. And the most effective interventions are going to combine the two of those things. So a lot of times people are just told, hey, go for a walk or right. do some weight bearing exercise. Well, what is weight bearing exercise? Number one, let's actually just talk about walking. Walking by itself is not enough to build an, uh, your bone density, right? So it's not enough. And what is walking going to do for your forearm strength? Is that going to help you improve your uh, bones there? Probably I, not, right? So a lot of times people are just told, do some weight bearing exercise. Well, weight bearing exercise is exercise where your body, your bones, your muscles, they have to work against gravity to keep you upright. There are things that you're doing on your feet and they're placing this good kind of stress on the bones. So that is your walking, your jogging, your hiking, your gardening, uh, playing with the kids or the grandkids, that kind of stuff. But then there's also lower impact weight bearing, which would be your yoga, your Pilates, your Tai Chi. Those are all really important, right? You need the weight bearing. Um, but you also need another type of exercise that I'm going to talk about in just a second. Uh, there's also non-weight bearing exercise. Okay. And when something is non-weight bearing, then it's not placing that good stress on the bones. And astronauts, when they go up in space and they don't have gravity working against them, they, they have an issue with this. They have to actively work against this to make sure they maintain and even build their bone strength. Uh, right. Otherwise, they'll lose it. So there right. are exercises that you, people can be doing that could be working against them or or at the at least not helping them cycling for for example right if you're doing long distance or endurance cycling or things like that that's that it's not going to be the best thing long term uh paddling or canoeing or kayaking or swimming also any of these things where you're seated and you're taking the stress off of those bones now it's not to say that if those things bring you joy and they make you happy and you love doing them, it doesn't mean you have to get rid of them and completely stop doing them in your life. It just means don't count that as your only form of exercise. Got it. You need to bring in now the muscle strengthening and the resistance training exercise. And right. that is such an important component of it. Uh, a lot of times people are, they focus so much on cardio, especially women when they're younger, we need to shift that focus to we need to do more muscle strengthening and resistance training exercises and you got to be in an intensity uh, and slowly progress yourself up to that point but you got to be at an intensity that's actually going to help provide the stimulus for muscle and bone growth and that's uh, most of the research shows five to ten repetition range uh, and then the lifts would be uh, squats and deadlifts and um, you know chin-ups with drop landings and some of those exercises if those sound intimidating don't be intimidated by them. You can find somebody to help you work through those things and get the right form and body mechanics in place.